esteemed deputy speakers, the honorable majority leader, the respected minority leader, distinguished colleagues, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, so I'm very delighted today to reconvene the second regular breaking strides from the first regular session. The 19th Congress's inaugural session will be etched in the annals of our history. Amidst adversities, we emerge triumphant, transforming stumbling blocks into stepping stones, coming together in a shared purpose and commitment to establish an unparalleled record of priority measures that directly uplift the lives of our citizens. As we usher in this new session, we stand poised to maintain and amplify our fostered momentum. The path ahead may appear formidable, yet we recall that, and I quote, the difficult we surmount forthwith, the impossible requires a bit more time. Guided by this indomitable spirit of resilience, unity, dedication, we march confidently forward in our legislative journey. We are here to respond to the call for public service to build a more just, prosperous, and equitable society for our people. Our mission is to uphold the Constitution, protect our democracy, and ensure every citizen's welfare. We must remember that our duties extend beyond the walls of this august chamber. We are elected to serve, listen, and represent our constituents' voices. Our task is not only to legislate, but to educate, guide, and inspire. Hence, as we move forward, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to transparency, accountability, and the tireless pursuit of the public welfare. The first regular session's accomplishment bear testament to our collective will and determination. We have raised the standards and the expectations are high. Yet we are not daunted, we are inspired. We are not simply lawmakers, but nation builders and champions of the Filipino people. Reconvening for the second regular session, I borrow wisdom from our esteemed president, Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., who asserts, and I quote, to forge significant progress, we must summon the bravery to envisage the change, the fortitude to strive for it, and the unity to materialize it. Your relentless devotion and unyielding efforts have launched us towards addressing the urgent challenges of our era and enacting impactful legislation. Now, we must ensure this momentum propels us further. Our solemn pledge is to continue championing the change our beloved nation so earnestly requires. In our pursuit, we remain steadfast, focusing on the 20 legislative measures approved during the second Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council LEDAC meeting. Our unwavering aim is to realize them before the year ends. We stay committed to spurring economic growth, alleviating poverty, augmenting healthcare services, and fostering job opportunities for our fellow countrymen. And these measures include, one, the amendments to the BOT law or the Public-Private Partnership Bill, two, the National Disease Prevention Management Authority, three, the Internet Transactions Act or the e-commerce law, four, Health Emergency Auxiliary Reinforcement Team, now known as the HEART Act, formerly the Medical Reserve Corps. Five, the Virology Institute of the Philippines. Six, the ROTC and National Service Training Program. Seven, revitalizing the salt industry. Eight, the valuation reform. Number nine, e-government and e-governance. And number 10, the ease of paying taxes. Equally important priority measures that we strive to pass this year are the number one, National Government Right Sizing Program, two, the Unified System of Separation, Retirement, and Pension of Military and Other Uniformed Personnel, 
the MUPs, three, LGU income classification, four, the waste to energy bill, five, the new Philippine Passport Act, six, the Magna Carta for the Filipino seafarers, eight, the amendments to the Anti-Agriculture Smuggling Act, nine, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas endorsed bank deposit secrecy, and ten, the Anti-Financial Account Scamming Act, the AFASA bills. We face the remaining bills in the LEDAC priority list with enthusiasm and optimism. Steadfast in our determination to transform these initiatives into concrete laws for the benefit of our fellow Filipinos. In the second regular session, we renew our dedication and passion, honoring our pledge to amplify investment prospects for domestic and foreign investors alike through the Mahalika Investment Fund and other initiatives aimed at accelerating our nation's development. In this endeavor, we are fortunate to have a strong collaboration with President Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr., whose leadership and guidance have been instrumental in our efforts to foster an environment that encourages economic growth and invites both local and international investments. His aspiration for a prosperous Philippines aligns with the objectives of this Congress, which seeks to achieve. And I am confident that together we can forge a flourishing path for the Filipino people. One of our priorities and a key aspect to upgrade and modernize our infrastructure is the strengthening of our public-private partnership scheme. This powerful tool enables us to harness the expertise, innovation, and resources of the private sector and combine it with the reach, stability, and public purpose of government. By leveraging the expertise and resources of the private sector, we can accelerate the development of vital transportation networks, energy systems, and digital infrastructures that are essential for a thriving economy. It is equally imperative to address the issues confronting our agricultural sector in the soonest possible time. We will redouble our efforts to stop the smuggling of rice, sugar, and onions, which harms our farmers' competitiveness and disrupts the agricultural value chain. We shall safeguard our farmers' interests, ensure equitable market conditions, and foster sustainable farming methods to ensure our nation's food security. In addition to our priority measures and in line with President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.'s commitment to sustainable fisheries, we will increase the existing strategic agriculture and fisheries development zones. These zones will not only reinforce our fight against illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, but also promote responsible fishing practices, safeguard our marine resources, and support the livelihoods of our fisherfolk. We also recognize the significance of reassuring foreign businesses about our investor-friendly policies. We will actively engage in discussions and cooperate with the global business community to create an international business environment in our country. We recognize the potential that such collaborations have in stimulating economic and advancement and job creation for our citizens. As we move forward, we have a robust pipeline of reforms designed to spur our nation's economic development further. We are dedicated to enacting laws that will remove obstacles, foster innovation, and support industries that have the potential to drive sustainable growth and development. The tangible change our previous session fostered represents merely the commencement of what we can achieve, that our accomplishments not represent a culmination, but a catapult launching us towards loftier goals. Let us never cease in our pursuit of excellence, exemplifying the will of the people in our every endeavor. And we continue to honor the unity and collaboration that underpinned our previous session, and despite diverse views, our collective commitment to the common good prevailed, culminating in beneficial resolutions for our nation. And I am assured that we will rise to the occasion, bolstered by our shared vision of a united and inclusive House of Representatives and our steadfast commitment to the Filipino people. May this session stand as a further testament to our capability and dedication as a people's lawmakers. Let us labor to sustain our gains, continue to work tirelessly, 
and strive to realize our shared dreams for our nation. Let us retain the momentum of the 19th Congress and strive to make it one of the most productive and impactful in our history. Once more, congratulations on the remarkable achievements of the first regular session. A heartfelt thank you to you all. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Mabuhay ang sabayang Pilipino. Mabuhay tayong lahat. The Secretary General will now call the role of members of the House of Representatives elected from the legislative districts and portion among the provinces, cities, municipalities, and the party list organizations.